Sup everybody, this is Carrick with ACG, and hey look, today I'm going to bring you a review, but this time it's for the exploration platformer and adventure and point-and-click adventure game, Samarist 3. In Samarist 2, you spent the entire game searching for a dog stolen by aliens, so of course here, you basically instantly abandon your dog and then become an alien yourself, an eclectic voyager on the ball sack of some giant space muppet with an unknown destination. You think I'm joking? Wait and see. The game is brought to you by the developers that also brought us Machinarium, which is another really cool game. Let's do this. If you like the video, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Samaros 3. Harry Gonad planets, heroes with abandonment issues, and an astronaut gnome, which is cooler than an ice pirate, but not as awesome as a space ranger. Graphics are up first. You know, these games have always had this incredibly unique, almost organically mixed microbial art style to them, and the sequel is really no slouch. In fact, most of the time, you're always feeling like you're on the back of some giant space creature or otherwise massive monstrosity compared to yourself. No lie, as you explore the world, there are numerous times where it's difficult to understand if you really are in space or maybe you're just a microbe on a piece of dander in the wind with asteroids and planetary bodies instead made of wood slivers, old desiccated bug corpses, and quite possibly some way past its expiration date blue cheese. Now, the art style is absolutely unique and it really is well done. Technically, it also runs very well and the animation merges with the game world with a flexibility I don't think we always see with these types of games where sometimes the character doesn't really mesh with the game world. The easiest thing to say would be to mix in the twisted locations of Dr. Seuss, splash in a bit of where the wild things are and then mix it all up with a pajama footy wearing yard gnome and you sort of get the idea of what you're going to be playing. It's a mixture of art style, sure, but it's done at times breathtakingly well. And that brings us to sound music and voice. And sound is up first. While the game's claim to fame is an adherence to music-based puzzle making, the sounds aren't to be ignored, and whether you're walking past the three lounge lizard singers on the planet and hearing their echoey snores, or capping the smokestack of an alien hermit who won't leave his house and chuckling at his circumstances, the sound is excellent with very, very little mud. Now, some locations are a bit lean on environmental sounds, but for the most part, it's good, like the wet, sloppy sounds of locations with mud-smacking footsteps merging into the scratchy sound of a small gnome just looking to get his explorer on as he climbs around what appears to be giant floating wooden stumps. And of course, all the way through, there are various different effects like reverb and echo, depending on where you are. Good stuff. Music. In many ways, the use of music here always reminds me of the old point-and-click adventure game Loom, with music here both playing ambiently in the background with some of the most unique and just downright odd instrument combinations and sounds I think I've heard in a long time. But also, since your gnome is outfitted with a magical space trumpet, you can use musical chords you hear from around the world to unlock particular puzzle answers. It's good stuff with the ambient music swaying between light xylophone-sounding synthesizers to triangles and harps accordingly, and then going to different music when it goes to other locations, and then also unfolding out into a full musical track with proper chords and progression. You're never going to get bored. Lastly, there's almost always this dull thrum of the universe around you to add a floor level musical vibe to the locations where everything else sort of sits on top of that and exists in concert with it. There really is a surprising amount of complexity here, whether flicking beetle antennae in specific rhythms to helping lizards get just the right pitch. There's a great deal actually going on within the game world when it comes to music voice. Now, with voice, there barely is any. Most of it's just sounds to impart emotional resonance or suggest success or failure or frustration if you're a monkey whose bathwater's getting cold. It's an odd way to go, with really just grunts and groans being the entire voice, but overall I think it works with this title. Gameplay. In many ways, a point-and-click adventure game, Samarost is much more than that, with an almost adventure-like feel to the gameplay itself. Of course, you play as a little space gnome of the prior titles, this time armed with a magical horn that fell from the sky, you decide to build a spacesuit out of the world's extra parts, alight it with living mushroom farts, and explore the universe around you, promptly leaving all alone and assuredly without food the dog you had saved in the prior adventure. As you explore, you're usually faced with a series of puzzles, many of them locations are music-based, to which you need to pay attention both with your eye and your ear 
here as you traverse from one planet to the other. And each is dramatically different from the last. While one location might look a bit like hell on Earth, another might look like a moldy piece of cheese that's been rolled around on a 1970s shag carpet and then thrown into the goddamn sky. Each location is warped and bent, a callback to Dr. Seuss architecture with its bent roofs and slightly skewed design, but also mixed with the round belly, stomach, and musculature designs that in some ways remind me of an anatomical book that somehow grew hair on it. Yeah, because for some reason, almost everything in this game world is covered in hair, and I'm not sure I even want to know why that is. Well, the game itself allows you to progress farther and farther, I didn't find that the puzzles progressed more and more in their difficulty. Instead, there was a refreshing aspect to the puzzles where they were just sort of there, some requiring a bit more thought or memorization than another, but they always were there and you sort of understood what the game was going for, and you usually won't be scratching your head as you leap, scurry, break, cut, eat, and slide yourself around the locations you explore. Additionally, inventory management is minuscule at best, with usually no more than one or two items in your inventory, and that's including the trusty space horn. Fun Factor while inherently there isn't a great deal of complex interactions within the title, it is indeed a move around, solve a puzzle style title at its core. It's the interlacing though, and the absolutely unique and at times really labyrinth-like locations and designs, as well as the wonderful use of music and sound within the puzzles that really is a highlight here. It's also much longer than the prior games. The characterization continues to make me question where I'm going and what I'm doing, but I don't really care because doing anything is just so damn enjoyable in the title and seeing a new location was just such a surprise. It's just fun. Of course, if you don't like these kind of games, I'm not quite sure why you're here, and this is not going to change your mind. So as you know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or deep, deep sale when it comes to Steam games, or never touch it again rating scale. This title is $14.99 and the longest of all of this series games and is well worth picking up. It offers an incredibly unique game world that is interesting to explore and interact with. And the fine use of puzzling music and sound means that, though at times it can feel a bit like other titles in the genre, there's always one aspect at any one time that solidly does not feel that way. It's a fine example, I think, of melding unique worldview with tried and true mechanics. So as always, if you like the video, hit thumbs up. Maybe check out our Reddit or Patreon. If you dislike the video, thumbs down as always, and peace out.